I'm Rose Stanley and this is World at Work TV. I'm joined today with John Bremen and Teresa Hopke. We're hearing more and more about some organizations that are really focusing in more on the employee experience. Can you tell me a little bit about what those ex organizations are really looking at, John? Let's start with you. Sure, I think when companies talk about the employee experience, they are talking about creating an environment for their employees that transcends individual programs and weaves together a differentiated experience than what they might have at another company. Each company has something different to offer its employees the same way it has something different to offer its customers and it's simply a matter of figuring out what's going to resonate for the particular workforce that they have with them. Yeah, I think it also involves just the ability to bring your whole self to work. I think more employers are recognizing that there's value in letting people be who they are and really capitalizing on the gifts and talents that people bring. But in order to do so, you have to be more authentic and transparent and, um, you know, as MasterCard says, to bring your heart and your mind to work. And I think that there are more organizations like MasterCard out there that are really realizing that we've lost some of the heart in work and we have to get that back in order to have better organizations. What do you think is prompting this type of, of thinking in these organizations? I think the main thing is that we're seeing people who are burnt out and disillusioned and overworked and we're seeing that this isn't a sustainable model. We've really marginalized the um, focus on people and we, it's been okay for us to put programs in place to try to help people out and, and really take a more siloed approach at the way that we're looking at human capital. And I think CEOs are realizing that they can't put it in a box and set it aside anymore. They actually have to unleash the potential of their people by caring about them and creating that differentiated experience that John's talking about. And so I just think that too many organizations are seeing the impact of the approach we've taken and the negative impact that it's created. John, I've heard you talking about this whole idea of looking at the employee as the consumer. Can yeah. you just extend on that a little bit and tell us yeah, what I'm that means? Yeah, I'm happy to. And I think this gets to your question about also why companies are doing this right now. I think that what's going on is two things. Number one, employees are coming to expect it. And with different generations, with different levels of experience, with a more technology-focused, interconnected world, I think our employees are expecting their companies to provide them with the same kind of experience that they get from other institutions with, with, with whom they're associated. And employees now have choices in where they can work. We don't talk a lot about the scarcity of talent that exists today for many key jobs, but the reality is employees really have a lot more choices today than they used to, and, and I think companies are having to really respond to that. I, I think the other thing also that's going on is that companies now have an ability to do this. I think this would have been really difficult 10 years ago, 20 years ago, because companies just did not have the data they needed in order to even understand what the employee preferences are or to deal with several different types of, of needs and preferences or four different generations. This is, this is a relatively new concept that's enabled largely by data and by technology. So technology has to some extent created the need, but it also helps us solve it as well. And John, didn't you mention that about 43% of organizations already feel like they are in that mindset? But for those organizations that really aren't there yet, what would you be telling them that they really need to start honing in on? Yeah, and it's a tricky situation, right? Because 70% of employees would like this, but only 43% of employers are providing it. I, I think the advice, first and foremost, is to start listening to employees about what they need. A lot of companies are afraid to ask employees what they need, but uh, the reality is having that information sort of unleashes the potential of the programs, and just as Teresa said a minute ago, asking employees and understanding what they need allows the company to find ways of having employees bring their authentic selves to work, and that, that really is the first step. The answers actually get really clear once you find out what your employees want. It's just you got to get over that hurdle. And Teresa, I know that, uh, just as John said, some organizations are a little fearful of perhaps doing um, surveys to find out. but. Uh, hi, well, how would you talk about Im 
employers that can embed some good questions into their engagement surveys or employee satisfaction surveys that really helps them understand the needs and the wants because what the organizations think the employees want a lot of times turns out to not be so. Yeah, I think that instead of just asking about programs and um, monitoring utilization, we need to be asking people about what is missing, what is missing in the experience that they have, what do they, and we need to be asking more questions around the experience, what experience would you like to have? And that's going to be a shift in language and mindset for employees as well, because they're not used to being talked to in that way. They're not used to somebody caring about the experience that they have. But but if we can start to ask some of those questions, and, and surveys are a place to do that, but I think that an even better way to do that is to have conversations. I think that the thing that's been missing from our organizations over the past several years is conversation. People are so busy, people are so connected that we're not talking anymore. And so to have those conversations with employees, to ask them what's going to keep you here, what would be the experience that you would want if you could create it, and knowing that when you have those conversations it does not obligate you to create some mass program that you're now going to have to roll out that's going to cost you lots of money, but it's more about letting the individuals know that you care about their needs and that you're willing to try to figure out what you have to do to create an experience for them. And what would you say as we are about to embark on this future is that they should start today or is there an urgency about this? Yes, absolutely. I think that the sooner the companies can shift their mindsets around this and begin to, I mean today, just to start thinking differently about the employee experience and to think that employees should have an experience, that we should start looking at consumers and employees as um, equals. And it's not just about our customers, our clients, our consumers, but it's about our employees and the importance there that they will then deliver the value to those other um, constituents. I think you can't start soon enough. I, I second that. I mean, would a, would a car manufacturer create a new minivan without asking the people who drive minivans what they need, what they want? Everything from cup holders to driving experience to colors and numbers of passengers. Right? They would never do that. They, they would never acquire a new company without first finding out if it's going to fit in. They'd never, a CEO would never buy a new technology without first finding out how it would work. It, it actually, to me, is a little, little confusing why they would spend you know, billions of dollars on HR programs without first understanding whether they're going to resonate with people. I think companies today are actually spending a fortune on programs that employees don't actually value as much as they might think, and they're probably missing some pretty inexpensive things that uh, could be replaced. And so I think, I think there's actually money on the table as well as engagement on the table uh, that everyday companies don't do this. They're missing opportunity and they're making it harder and harder to uh, attract, retain, and engage the, the, the workforce that they need. I think if organizations ask today, I think they'd be pretty surprised to learn that programs aren't what employees want and they could be saving a lot of money on programs and by asking the question and caring that they are going to be able to shift the way that they invest in their talent. Great thoughts. Thanks, John. Thanks, Teresa. Thank you. Thank you. For World at Work, I'm Rose Stanley.